in this video, <coughs> I'm gonna show you how to make B videos for Instagram. What's up everybody, Chris Puncelon here, back with another video. So, um, you're here because you wanna learn how to make beat videos for Instagram. Um, so I'm assuming that you already have a beat and I know your first instinct is to probably do it like this. But in my opinion, there's a better way to do it. First, we're gonna open up our beat, open preferences, choose sound flower, open line in, change the output to our monitor, make sure we're getting sound. And we're doing all this so we can record all of the audio that's in the computer internally. Press file screen record. Hit record on your camera. Jam out. Once we're finished filming, we're gonna import our footage into our editing software. I'm using Final Cut Pro 10. We're gonna match the audio from the camera recording to the screen recording. And once we have it synced, we're gonna turn down the camera audio. Then once I have it edited to how I like, I like to make a thumbnail first so that when you're looking at my Instagram, it looks nice and clean. We're gonna open up Photoshop and make a nice little thumbnail. I'm gonna leave a link in the description on how to make three by three guidelines for Photoshop. Export. Then we're gonna throw the thumbnail at the end of the video and make it short as possible so that people don't see it. Export the video. Open up Handbrake, which is a program that compresses files. Then I'm gonna choose Web Optimized. And once that's finished exporting, I'm gonna send it to myself via iMessage. Pull it up on my phone, go to Instagram, and choose the cover, and make sure I scroll all the way to the end so I can choose the thumbnail that I made for the video. Post the video. Then once I have the video posted, I like to throw in my hashtags as the first comment instead of the caption. That way the caption looks nice and clean and um, you don't see all of the hashtags in there. And that's how you do it. If you enjoyed this video or found any value from it, please hit that like button. It lets me know that you guys enjoyed this and are enjoying the content that I put out. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. I do upload videos weekly. If you don't like the way I use my hands in my videos, then um, this channel is not for you. That's gonna conclude this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to Tony Brakes, Ryan Moore, William Mayers, Paul, and B Banner for using the hashtag ChrisPunsalon365. Now I'm gonna read some comments from previous videos. Um, Put it right here. What do you do if you're afraid to get taken advantage of in terms of people stealing beats? Go to church. I mean, if you're really afraid of people stealing your beats or stealing anything from you, then I think you should get an attorney or have some contracts written up so that if somebody does steal your beats, then you can pull up and be like, yo, I got this contract, whatever, whatever, hold the record up, cease and desist, all those terms. How did you learn to play the piano? Was it something you learned as a kid or did the passion of creating beats help elevate that skill. I took piano lessons for a few months and um, after that everything has just been YouTube videos, YouTube videos, YouTube videos, YouTube videos, and more YouTube videos. Um, YouTube has been my best friend throughout my entire production career and it will continue to be until something else comes along and uh, the reason I wanted to play piano was my passion for making music so um, and that's another reason why I get so excited uh, when I play even just simple melodies or simple chords. Like some people call me out on jamming out too hard. Um, but it's if you just understood how long I've been wanting to play piano over beats, then you'll understand why I get so excited still. 
um, I remember like like it was yesterday having the machine and wanting to play uh, extra melodies over samples, but I just I couldn't figure it out until I figured it out and every time I play a chord progression or play a lead melody over it, I still get that same feeling from the first day that I played uh, my first melody that made sense. So, hey Chris, do you play the black keys even if they are not in the key of your song or did the key signature involve all the black keys? Yes, that's correct. The key signature involved all of the black keys and two white keys. Um, I'm just gonna quickly answer this question. So, the scale that I like to play in often is the D sharp minor scale or E flat, uh, E flat minor. And E flat minor or D sharp minor is all of the black keys plus F and B. So that's the scale that I like to play in a lot. So when you guys see me playing all the black keys and stuff, um, that is the scale that I'm playing in. Yeah, hope that answers your question. Like I said, if this video brought you any value, please hit that like button. It does help out the video and it also helps out my channel and it also helps me understand that you guys like these videos and you want me to keep putting out content. Um, I appreciate all the love and support. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave it down in the comments below. I do try my very best to, resp to respond to every single comment and um, yeah, I'll see everybody in the next video. Peace and love. See ya.